and uh, on this on the stage really glad for that. Yeah, hi, I'm Fernando. Uh, so, yeah, I just got here. Uh, I don't know Sherman, uh, so I'm confused. And also, my bird trimmer is American, so I haven't been able to like, shave or anything. Um, so, I make video games. <laughs> I don't use Mac OS. Uh, and also my Windows installation died, <laughs> so we're just going to have to win this somehow. Yes, you can do that. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I make video games. Uh, I've been making games since 2006, I think. Uh, I also organize stuff like Fuck This Jam, which was a game jam that we did last year. Uh, which was based around making games you hate. Uh, <laughs> I made a bunch of games with uh, Swing. This was Cardboard Box Assembler, which is your, this guy that went crazy uh, and this trapped in cube shaped worlds and stuff like that. Uh, I make weird games about being transvestites and killing babies. I organize uh, Lost Levels, which is a sort of fun conference that run in front of GDC this year, which was basically just an excuse to how everyone wanted to give a talk, give a talk without worrying about the conference buses and stuff like that, uh, which went really, really good. And we had like, uh, I don't know, 60 talks in this park. It was amazing. Um, I also do weird stuff with a friend called Chris Hedborg that runs this uh, Weird Kids Collective. Um, that's also moving to Berlin. He's coming here next week. Uh, we're all moving together. It's going to be awesome. And um, like make uh, stuff like black screens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And my main project right now is called Panoramic Code. And it's an album of musical landscapes uh, that have been shown around uh, using an analog controls. And I'm gonna just play this for you. And it has sound, so try to hear it. Okay. So you basically move controls, and everything changes stuff. And then you do stuff. And, um, <laughs> changes.
I'm making the game with this is ahead. I'm making the game with uh, David Canada who did the music for Proteus. Uh, and it started out as this uh, just messing around with this controller that I found in his house when I was on the team. And uh, yeah, we didn't think of much of it at, at the time, which is a little bit of process. So. Around this, I, I found it really interesting to have this really weird controller, uh, which I've never seen before. Um, and then we showed it at Indicate uh, last year, so we did like a much more polished version prototype. And after that, we started to get a, a little bit of attention and started like uh, ask, had friends who were organizing, organizing events uh, ask us to show it at other places. Uh, so we've been pretty much working on it full time for about six months and also showing it in a bunch of places. Uh, we were lucky enough to show it at the MoMA in San Francisco last year, not this year. Uh, we did this weird installation with uh, a friend's game during GEC, which is called Soundsoft. Uh, and we made both games listen to each other. And uh, Soundsoft is a game uh, of being in a trance and uh, it's played through chanting to a from microphone. microphone. Uh, we also have like uh, one of my favorite motion designers design the art for a uh, new paranormal scene that we showed there. Uh, so it was really awesome. And we showed it at a bunch of like other festivals. It was in a maze uh, here last year. Uh, you showed it in New York in you know, this huge uh, movie theater, which was really, really amazing. Uh, we had even like uh, in Fantastic Arcade this year, uh, they built like an arcade cabinet with a custom controller just for the game, and, like a friend's son played, which was uh, really, really amazing. Uh, we showed it at Nottingham a couple of weeks ago uh, in the main square, uh, where there were a bunch of kids playing it, uh, which was also really, really amazing. Uh, and even uh, we had a friend, uh, a friend of a friend, uh, who makes amazing custom MIDI controllers come to us and ask us to make a controller just for it. And he made this amazing looking uh, controller from scratch just for the game. Uh, and yeah, it's been a pretty amazing experience so far. Uh, and now we're working on bringing it to like, as many people as possible. We're working on a PC and Mac version uh, that's going to come out next year. Uh, we have funding from IndieFund, uh, a little bit of money to work on it. And uh, um, yeah, we are also collaborating with other artists to make scenes for it. Um, and so. And I'm not here, and uh, yeah, that's, that's why I do. And this is the worst thing I've ever that I can get. Uh, if you have any questions. <laughs> yeah. I uh, didn't understand the part where you were talking about uh, Proteos. Which was the connection to Proteus, the game? Uh, the guy that's that is making the music for Panoramical did the music for Proteus as well. Okay, but that uh, was before Proteus was released, did that? Uh, so, he released Proteus and now we're working on this. Ah, okay. Can you tell us what technology you used to make it's this? It's Unity. Yeah, Unity. Yeah. <laughs> and you control it in any other way than using the. Yeah, so this version will have a PC Mac version. Uh, you, you can connect any MIDI controller and configure it. Uh, you will have a mouse and keyboard controls that kind of emulate the feeling of controlling the, with the MIDI controller. And we're also working on this iPad and one tablet controller that uh, connects to the game and uses touch controls to change the parameters. 
uh, but still the like the physical MIDI controller is kind of like the best way to play it. But we also are trying to make as many people as possible to be able to play it. Oh, still keeping as much as possible of the original experience. How did you get funding to um, make this, run this project? Uh, so we went to uh, IndieFun, who funds uh, games, and we showed it to uh, them. They, they saw it at a couple of uh, conferences where we showed it. Uh, and many they saw it in New York, uh, where was it? it was in this theater. Um, so yeah, they 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 decided to support us uh, to like see how uh, how it would work to like, sell a game like this, which is very uh, abstract and weird. Uh, so it's kind of an experiment for everyone. So you will keep it this way, and you do not plan to make it. Uh, I don't know. Game more gamified. More gamified? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. no. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it's, uh, the, we found that just the experience of controlling a bunch of different parameters at once uh, is engaging enough. Uh, and that you don't need, really need a goal. And actually, it was very surprising when we showed it. Uh, a bunch of places that uh, people still got engaged with it um, without needing, you know, the game to tell them to actually do something. So it's like the game is about the experience of being immersed in uh, the music and, and the graphics and everything, and people really get that. So we're pretty confident uh, about keeping the design the way minimal. And also, Produce is a good, um, you know, example of a game that. It, doesn't have, really have any intrinsic uh, goals set by the game, but uh, it's still a successful game, it's still a successful experience. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about making it for touch devices? Like uh, running on a touch device? Touch screen? Yeah, uh, yeah, that came up, but uh, my, my posture with that is that um, Having the control be separate from the screen is a really big deal, and not having like your fingers all over the screen uh, is it's really, it's really good. And like the the ability to be to change stuff without looking at what you're controlling uh, and just staring at the screen is a big part of uh, being able to you know be immersed experience. So um, we might make. Uh, a little thing uh, that runs uh, standalone you know, touch device as uh, so a demo or something we're thinking about, but uh, not, the, the main game will still have an external control uh, to the game. Yeah. Um, are, are there uh, different songs, or, or is, it, is it just one landscape? You're playing, or is yeah, there any so progress in, in We're working on a bunch of uh, different, we, we call them scenes or whatever. Okay. Uh, but yeah, you have like different environments that you can play around with. Uh, Do they change while we play them? Is, is there any progress in that comes from the game, or are you the, the only environment? Yeah, like, like uh, after a while, some things change, or...? Um, no, so pretty much the each environment is uh, like one close experience and there's no time limit or anything. Uh, so it's up to you to control how much time you want to spend on it. Okay, uh, so and then you have like variations in the different So in the scene you're the only one interacting with it. There's no no change from the game itself. Right, right no. Uh, no. Like every every combination of elements is uh, available to you at any time. Mm -hmm. So uh, and that's actually a big part of the simplicity of uh, I don't know, like in the design of it, that uh, there's no transitions and there's no, no progression, and that still works because it makes it puts you as a player in uh, a position of uh, having to make these transitions. And also, one thing that we found really interesting, well, we showed it in a bunch of places, is uh, there's some, a performance aspect to it as well because when people are playing it and there's a, a, a crowd of people watching, 
they get into this mindset where they will try to make like nice looking transitions between the elements and try to like create kind of a story uh, for others to watch, which we I totally didn't design for that, but uh, it happened. It's really mm -hmm. awesome. Do you have any plans on uh, when to release it or how? Uh, we're working on it. <laughs> it's here, hopefully. Uh, have you been approached by DJs interested in using it in their shows? Given that, as you said, there's this performance aspect of using it. We not directly, but we have a lot of people telling us that maybe it should be uh, like a vision tool or something. Uh, but one thing is that uh, it's. To me, it's the sound is also a big part of like the experience of like like how every little element in the, in the environment sounds. Uh, so just removing the sound and using it for graphics seems kind of like awkward to me. Uh, but, I don't know. We're still uh, one thing that I want to do that I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be have time to do it is uh, to include uh, like OSC support. So that you can send uh, parameters to the game from any other device or any other software to control it. Uh, <coughs> so just so that people can have games and uh, do interesting stuff with it. But, uh, yeah. Cool. Cool. <laughs> <laughs>